Russia claims a strike on the city of Belgorod left four people hurt overnight. The region borders northeastern Ukraine. Russian officials say several civilian areas were hit, including eight apartment buildings and a school. It comes after Russia blamed Ukraine for a drone strike in Moscow on Tuesday. President Vladimir Putin has said that Moscow will improve their air defense systems. James Landau with our news partners at the BBC joins us from Kyiv. James, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us. Moscow has blamed Ukraine for attacks on Russia over the past week. He insists it's not behind them. What do we know about who is behind these attacks? Well, you're right. Ukraine has denied responsibility, but it's, it's not a full-throated denial. Officials use phrases like, uh, we had no direct involvement, which leaves open some other possibilities. The thing is, some of these, uh, there were eight drones launched against Moscow. Three of them were brought down using electronic countermeasures. That means there's quite a strong possibility that there's a lot of remnants left, which will give the Russian authorities a lot of indication about where exactly these drones came from. And there are some early indications that they do look pretty similar to drones that were made here in Kyiv. The thing is, if you talk to military analysts here, they all say, look, the sort of activities we're seeing now, including a drone attack on Moscow are exactly the kind of things you would expect a country like Ukraine to do to keep Russia guessing, to discomfort Russia before any potential Ukrainian counteroffensive. Well, it's such an interesting point that you're making, James, because um, Russia started this war. They have attacked Ukraine, and now Ukraine is trying to attack back. But the Biden administration says that it doesn't support Ukrainian attacks on Russian soil. It's made it clear that it doesn't want U.S. weapons used inside of Russia. Obviously, President Biden has tried to toe the line to make sure that the U.S. does not get more involved in this conflict. But is that, is that even a fair, is that a fair requirement that he's putting on Ukraine? And, and how can even the Pentagon ensure that Ukraine follows suit? Well, the great leverage that the United States has is it can basically say to Ukraine, look, if you don't follow the rules, we'll stop giving you all this military support, mm -hmm. either now and during the war, but also in the long-term future, to try and deter future Russian aggression. But Ukraine makes this point. It says, look, we're not using war weapons from the United States and the West in Russia. But there's no restriction over what Ukraine does with its own weapons. And I think that's the difference here. Mm. James, you spoke with former director of the Central Intelligence Agency, David Petraeus, about the war in Ukraine. What did he tell you? Well, General Petraeus is very interesting because, A, he's a former military commander, so he knows about offences, but also he's plugged in here. He saw President Zelensky yesterday. And in my interview, what struck me was just his sheer confidence about not just the coming Ukrainian offensive, but also his very bleak assessment of Russia's fighting capability. This is just a flavor of what he told me. The Russian winter offensive uh, has failed to achieve its objectives. Yes, it took one piece of that, Bakhmut, but as the Ukrainian leaders have described to us over the last several days, that was an incredible mousetrap for the Russians. And by the Russians' own admissions, Prigozhin and others, they lost tens of thousands of soldiers, many more that were wounded there, and they failed to achieve the greater objectives of retaking all of Luhansk and Donetsk oblasts. The, the thing about General Petraeus, as well as saying that the Ukrainian army was ready to launch this counteroffensive, when I asked him, well, what was holding them up, he was really interesting. He said two points. One is they're waiting for the spring sunshine to do its work and dry the ground here so that tanks and armored vehicles can roll mm -hmm. off-road. But also, he said, President Zelensky was still waiting for one more bit of armor from the West. When that happens, that, this offensive, he said, will begin. James, thanks so much.